On today's episode of the Cryptoverse, YouTube is apparently being dragged into the lawsuit with regards to BitConnect. Dash continue to pave the way in Venezuela along their mission to host 12 conferences to educate the stricken citizens. And Bitcoin is about to break its next key resistance level. So all of that on today's episode of the Cryptoverse. So stay right there. Hi there guys, welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. I'm your host, Chris Coney. So YouTube has been dragged into this class action lawsuit with regards to BitConnect. Now I find this particularly interesting because it deals with a similar point of law to the Silk Road case. The question is, is a centralized platform responsible for the content on that platform? So this is what it's saying here. The class action lawsuit is, is with regards to BitConnect um, and YouTube's failure to protect its users from being exposed to scams videos. Because as you remember, BitConnect was somewhat of a pyramid scheme that relied on new investors coming in to pay back old investors. And it went like wildfire on YouTube. There were tons of channels that set up and were funded entirely off of the BitConnect system. And their goal was to make videos about BitConnect how much money they were making in order to get people to sign up you know under them so those videos were on youtube so are, are youtube responsible for those videos or rather are they responsible for not screening those videos out or filtering them out and here's the real humdinger it says here this case might be used by google the owners of youtube and others to justify their bans on crypto ads arguing that their algorithms cannot distinguish between legitimate projects and frauds because these these videos that we're talking about here from these BitConnect um, distributors, they were just regular free content they were putting out. So it's, it's okay for Google to screen out ads because there's a human approval process there. But what happens when people are putting out free content that people are watching? How on earth does the algorithm distinguish between what's legitimate free content and what's promoting things like BitConnect. Difficult. In any case, YouTube has been added as a defendant in the class action lawsuit against BitConnect, evidently by publicly available documents filed with the Southern District Court of Florida. And according to the lawsuit, it says the Google-owned video platform failed to protect or warn its users from BitConnect affiliates promotional material, which reached 70,000 hours of content on YouTube and 58 million views. Pretty good in terms of promotional reach. Now it says here several of the channels where YouTube partners, but I'm sure there's something in the YouTube terms and conditions that was violated here because I don't think YouTube are actually allowing their terms and conditions for these kinds of schemes to be promoted. So right out of the gate, I think these people were probably violating YouTube's terms and conditions. So the ultimate question I pose to you is the same one that this article ends on. Should social media platforms like YouTube be blamed for the content scammers upload? Let me know what you think in the comments below. On to this next story then by nulltransaction.com. Dash continues to pave the way for cryptocurrency adoption in Venezuela. And I've mentioned this on the show a few times about this Dash treasury proposal that has been funding these conferences, these Dash conferences in Venezuela. And I've seen many people in the comments recently asking me to include some more Dash news in the show. So here it is. So let's go down to paragraph four here. It says, a while ago, the Dash team announced its plans to host a total of 12 conferences in Venezuela. At the time, that was considered to be a major milestone if it could be pulled off successfully. And such a venture is not without its own set of challenges as Venezuela is a very peculiar country when it comes to international interference in their financial system. And I think they're up to conference number nine. Yes, there it is. Uh, the Venezuela branch, branch in quotes, has now successfully crowdfunded the ninth domestic Dash conference uh, in the seventh city in Venezuela. So going pretty well. Now, this to me sounds like something that would come from the mind of someone like Ryan Taylor, who knows what he's doing in terms of getting new payment systems adopted since that's what he's been doing for most of his career before becoming the CEO of Dash Core. 
And I hate to say it, but this is also one of the benefits of having that core leadership, you know, driving a single agenda that the community then rallies around. You can get a lot done that way. But like I've always said, Dash knows what it is, digital cash, and all of its decisions are based on whether it will make it a better or worse digital cash. So while they are working hard to turn Venezuela into a so-called Dash nation, the final paragraph here says, all of this further shows that the mainstream appeal of cryptocurrency is nowhere near where it should be at this point. Despite clear advantages and benefits, cryptocurrencies struggle to get beyond the concept of being a store of value or a speculative investment vehicle. Whether or not breaking this vicious cycle is even remotely possible at this stage and in this time is a question which has been proved very difficult to answer. That's a very interesting point, isn't it? Do we need a rush of users who don't appreciate cryptocurrency as a store of value and then just use it as a means of exchange in order for the price to rise? Otherwise, if everyone appreciates the store of value and the speculative value of cryptocurrencies, what's, what's to stop everybody from just becoming a hodler? And I thought about it and I thought, I noticed that with pounds and dollars, well, we use them both as a store of value and as a means of exchange, don't we? And we do that because we believe the value to be stable enough to store our value in it, but rising slowly enough that we feel okay to spend some of it. Right? If crypto could get to that point of stability, maybe we would, we would treat it in the same way. And now finally on to a Bitcoin chart reading for today. So now Bitcoin is sandwiched on the four hour chart right between the 200 period exponential moving average and 6,800 price point, which has proved significant in the recent past. As you can see here on the chart, if you look at this on the video version, around the 19th of June, and also either side of like the 11th of June, this is where this price level of 6,800 has been interacted with quite significantly. So given that we're above the 200 EMA, which is the thick green line on the chart, I would trade this as a simple breakout of 6,800 and then ride it all the way just shy of 7,700. That's not financial advice, this is just for educational purposes, but that's what I see in this setup. As ever, never trade without a plan or with money that you're not willing to lose. If you're a regular viewer of the Cryptoverse, then you know that I take user requests for technical analysis portions. So a new system here, let's try this. If you send me an EOS tip, and then write your chart reading request in the memo field, then I'll consider it. So my account name on EOS is Chris JS Coney. And if you look down here, there's a memo field in the EOS transaction where you can type some text in. So if you send me an EOS tip and then put in the memo, the coin you want me to read, I'll consider including it in a future video. But that's all I've got for you today. So if you thought this video was absolutely terrible, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit the like button, get subscribed, and find out where you can greatly deepen your knowledge about cryptocurrencies and how to make money with them at the link in the video description to my online school. Also down there is a link to my second channel, which is all about EOS. If you've got a bit more time, then check out this video. Other than that, guys, that's all I've got for today. So until the next time, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.